Hi, today's good person to know is Tom Alvridge. He's general manager at Uber and he told us how Uber started and a few things they have in the pipeline. For those of you that don't know, Uber is an app that connects people to private licensed drivers. It was founded in 2010 by two co-founders who were trying to get a cab. So the idea was born out of a real need. Tom demonstrated how the app works and what you can expect from the service. Gone are the days of hailing for a cab outside in the freezing cold and now you simply tap to get a cab. The request goes to the drivers closest to you and they aim to get to you within five minutes. At the moment it's currently 3.3 minutes. What I think is really cool about this site is that you the passenger is in total control because it's cashless, you get to give your feedback on the experience. Four and five stars is great, but anything less than three is unacceptable. And that's exactly how it should be. There is so much going on within Uber itself. They've got Uber Eat, Uber Ice Cream, Uber Carpooling, Uber Business. There's so much going on that I hope you enjoy this video. We're an app that connects uh, people who need to go somewhere with licensed private hire drivers. The way that it works is very simply we have a smartphone app that you download from, uh, from an app store. You open the app and you can see uh, the vehicles that are online and available near to you. Tap a button and that request goes to the nearest available driver. He or she receives a request, um, accepts the booking, navigates towards you. You can watch your driver come towards you in the app in real time takes you wherever you want to go and then at the end of the journey um, you see how much the fare is, you pay cashlessly, start charge directly to your card and then you rate the driver out of five stars. We really value having one tap to ride. You open the app, you can hit a button and a car is on the way and you can watch that car coming to you. Being able to push a button and get a ride whenever and wherever you want one is, is something that we work hard to, to make happen. Having uh, clear fare estimates, being upfront about how we calculate the fare uh, is important. Cashless and convenient, so um, we, don't, we don't have tips in the system, it's completely cashless. Um, these are things that we do just to make it as convenient as possible. We want the whole experience to be seamless. You get in the car, have a great driver, takes you wherever you want to go, um, and then at the end of the journey you simply say thank you very much and get out. We have a two-way feedback system. You rate the driver after every single trip out of five stars. The trip is four or five stars, we kind of think that's, that's decent, we've done a good job. But if it's three stars or less, then it opens a menu and we ask for feedback for you to tell us what was wrong with the trip, what could we have done better, Did, uh, was the, the car not up to standard, was the route not efficient enough. Uh, so we collect all of that and we act on all of that feedback. Feature in the app is you can share your fare, so if you're travelling with friends, and split the cost. It was, it was basically inspired by a real need. The guy on the right there, that's Travis, he's the CEO of, of Uber now. Garrett on the left is the, the other co-founder. They were in Paris in 2009 at a conference, a bit like this, and um, anybody who's been to Paris knows that it's notoriously difficult to get a taxi. Basically stood outside and commenting that wouldn't it be good if you could just take your phone out of your pocket and push a button and know that a driver is coming towards you to pick you up. The technology exists to be able to do that with mobile broadband, smartphone apps, and, uh, and GPS, so why isn't that a thing? And it wasn't until the next year, the summer of 2010, that the service was first launched in San Francisco. Very small, it was basically seen as just a way for these guys and some of their friends to get around uh, and have a kind of cool app that they could request a private driver, a personal driver, to come and pick them up. Um, we're launching cities at, at a rate of uh, more than one a week, and we're adding new new partner drivers at a rate of, of tens of thousands every single month. The thing that we really value is, is the reliability of the service and, and having short ETAs. Basically being able to take your phone out of your pocket, press the button and know that a car is just around the corner and coming to pick you up. So one of the things that you get with that scale is the system becomes incredibly efficient. And these are the ETAs that we have in these cities today, right now, on average. So on average in London, if you were to walk outside here, on average, you push a button and a car is with you in 3.3 minutes. And that's our goal. We want to uh, provide a service that is reliable enough that you can push a button and in less than five minutes, in all of the cities that we're operating, a car comes and picks you up. So when you push the button and you're, you're connected with the, with the driver, you 
uh, you can watch them coming live uh, on the map in real time. So not only is that really convenient, it's, uh, it's also safer. It means that you, you know when to put your coat on and, and go outside. You can time it with the driver. You can share your ETA. So if you're, um, if you're on the way home, let's say, then uh, there's a feature and you can basically send a link to, to anybody. They can open the link and they can track your car in real time. Not having cash is a really big thing for drivers. Being able to apply comments and being able to give that feedback in real time. We have a 24 seven support function that picks up that feedback and anything that we need to action, we do uh, very readily. We wanna scale the core business that I just described as quickly as possible to allow us to then try and innovate and, and explore some other things that you could do with this sort of a product. On one day in July, there's a new button in the app called Ice Cream. You push that button and an ice cream van will drive towards you and you can watch the ice cream van in real time on the app. And when it gets towards you, you can buy an ice cream, pay for it cashlessly through the app, get a receipt and you've got an ice cream. It's basically a partnership with Spotify where if you've got a Spotify account, you can connect your account to your Uber account and you can control the music that your driver has from their car stereo from the back of the car. There's no wires, it all happens magically. Uh, and you can basically search Spotify so you can listen to any song in the world and, uh, and, and play it from the back of the car. What this will do is allow a business to sign up to Uber and have a single point of admin contact. So if you've got a, a bunch of employees who take taxis all the time, then you can see how much you're spending. Everybody can link directly to the Uber for Business account for the company. Um, the admin can you know, manage the spend, understand the details. So a part of business travel, which has been pretty clumsy and a bit of a pain up to now, can be a lot more seamless. You can fly to any one of 300 plus cities and use exactly the same service. Example of one of the sort of Uber experiments that we've been running. This has been in New York for, for over a year now. And essentially what this is, is a way for businesses to deliver stuff to people. Uber Eats, the way that this works is for a small window during the day, started off at lunchtime. So between say 12 o'clock and two o'clock in the city in a certain area, there's a, a new section of the app that you can open and you can see um, the partnerships that we have with different restaurants on that day. If you're delivering food in this way, then actually you don't need a restaurant in a high cost location in the center of the city. What you really need is a production line of a team making food way out of the city where rent is very cheap, where a team of Uber drivers can come and pick it up at 11 o'clock, take hundreds and hundreds of meals and go and deliver them across the city. So it, it kind of changes the dynamics of how restaurants think about their um, their locations and how they prepare food because typically between kind of 6 a.m. unless you're a, if you're a typical restaurant that does food in the evening 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. is kind of dead time so this is a new way for businesses to prepare the food and get it out there the final thing the final sort of product or innovation uh, to talk about is um, is what we call uber pool uh, this is now live again I lose count because we're launching uber pool in pretty much one city a week at the moment very simply this is a way for you to share a car with other people who are um, going to the same place or are en route. And, um, and what we will do is we will match you with that, with that person. So if the deviation to go and pick up the second passenger is less than five minutes, the driver will, uh, will go to pick up the second passenger and take them where, it, where they wanna go. It just works from both the rider and driver perspective because if a driver has two or three or even four people in the back of the car, clearly they're happier. All what we work hard to do for drivers is keep them busy for as much time as possible. Um, if you've got more than one person in the car then um, and, and they're paying a reduced fare, then that's only a good thing. From a passenger's point of view, clearly this means we can bring down the cost. When I was listening to Tom's talk, I was just thinking about all the possibilities that are out there that we could put in place in our own businesses to complement services that we're currently providing. That's exactly what Uber are doing and that's why they've grown phenomenally in the last five years. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe to see more and thank you for watching.